what is uh, ICANN doing to help develop uh, African content? And I'd like to describe the internet as a three-layer cake. The bottom layer of the cake are the pipes and the plumbing. That's like the new fiber optic line, the link in Mombasa, or the wire, the, the antennas. Anything that moves the messages is pipes and plumbing. The middle layer is traffic and routing. The top layer are applications and content. ICANN is only concerned with the middle layer of traffic and routing. Traffic and routing is done by a combination of internet protocols, or IPv4 or 6, and then the domain name system, which ICANN is the global coordinator for through our multi-stakeholder process. So we are only concerned with traffic and routing. So we are very concerned about domain name system security, for example. We're concerned that, as uh, Peter mentioned, that we have more top-level domains. For example, uh, we, we received a letter from the chief of the Zulu tribe that he would like to have .zulu, or is interested in applying for .zulu as a top-level domain. That's a concern to us. We do not address content issue or the application uh, layer explicitly, so we rely upon the, the good people you know, of Africa and the world to create the content as, as they see fit. Just, just, a, just a quick follow-up on that. The, the, the other thing that we don't do is the bottom layer. We often ask, what are, what are we doing to help roll out fiber, roll out cable, roll out that kind of capacity building, and equally for the reasons Rod has given, that's not our job. We, we're happy to cooperate with people in, in the top layer and the bottom layer, and we have close relations with some of them, but that's not our job. You don't want us getting into that because we wouldn't be any good at it. What we're good at, or what we try to be good at, is, is the middle layer. Question? What steps is it taking to cover internet neutrality? We are concerned with the parts that relate to traffic and routing. So we're concerned about the domain name system. So for example, on Friday, we had the first ever uh, uh, training we had had uh, globally on a DNS CERT, or Computer Emergency Response Team, meeting with different uh, country code operators across Africa. I think there were 20 or 30 country operators present to talk about how to protect the domain name system from botnet attacks, uh, which are one type of cybersecurity attack that can be used and leveraged in fraudulent activities. For example, you can use a botnet attack to overload the computer servers of a company so you can then go and attack other areas of the company and, and, and they're not able to protect it. So we are involved with that. We're also involved with the Whois system, which records who's registered domain names, but there's a lot of discussion around who is on what are the privacy rights of people in, every, in different countries around the world. Uh, so we have some involvement in, in fraud, but uh, only as it affects the domain name system or the addressing system, and if people are trying to use those systems explicitly for fraud, then we become involved. Ron, we had a question that came in that was emailed from a journalist in Germany. You had issued a, a request and urged African leaders to join the Governmental Advisory Committee by the time of our next meeting in Brussels. The question was, realistically, how many members of DAC do you think will, that, that you gain today? I don't know. That's up to the, the leaders of the countries of Africa to, to decide. Uh, we certainly hope we get at least one, uh, and we'd be thrilled if we got five or ten uh, as the message spreads out. You know, again, Kenya has been a real leader here, has been heavily involved. Gambia, you know, as we've seen with uh, our board of director, uh, Katine Ture. Uh, uh, South Africa, many African countries have been involved. 20 have been involved and are involved in the GAC, but over 30 countries are not involved. We would like to see every country, every nation in Africa involved in our government advisory committee. We would also be very happy to see at what we call at-large structures in every country. There's over 22 at-large structures across Africa. Uh, that whether they're linking uh, 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 libraries together on the internet or working to help farmers or working to spread education on DNS security, many different topics and issues. So we would love to see this rich internet ecosystem growing across Africa and uh, we will do our best to support that. Great, let me, let me follow up on that because Getting governments into the GAC is, is very important, but remember ICANN is a multi-stakeholder body. Everybody who is affected by the operation of the internet has a role in making the policy that affects them. 
So there's also a call out to have the business communities come and join the business constituency. There's a call out to make sure that the country code managers are coming and joining in at the country code level. That the intellectual property lawyers who are concerned about intellectual property rights and their infringement on the internet, they've got a place to come as well. All of the different pieces need input from the African equivalents. Otherwise, those policies will be made and your voices won't be heard. So in addition to the call to the GAC, uh, let's, 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 make, let's be clear, there's a standing call out to all parts of the ecosystem to come to ICANN. It's completely transparent. It doesn't cost you anything to participate. In terms of, me there's no membership fee to come and take part in these processes. So let's, let's get that very clear. We want everybody coming that's affected by the policies that we make. Uh, Maria, you had a question? Thank you. I'm Maria Farrell. I'm writing with the Crooked Timber blog. Um, there's been quite a bit of media coverage of the independent review panel decision on the potential dot triple X domain, and I just wondered, um, if, if, do you, are you expecting any developments on that during this week or in the, in the coming weeks and months? Thanks, Maria. I'll take that one. Yes, the bylaws require us to consider the decision of the independent panel, and, and we have started that process already, and there will be further consideration of it at the board meeting on Friday. Uh, I'm not able at this stage to say what the board is going to do, but uh, at least we will be uh, meeting the, the bylaw requirement of, of considering uh, the decision. I have to also say how, how pleased we are, I suppose, that this piece of our accountability mechanism has been tested. This is the first case that's gone through this particular process, and, and pleased that it obviously works. Uh, this is, a, I'm not sure whether you people are aware of the, the situation, but this was a person, this was an applicant who had applied for a top level domain and was turned down. Uh, they, they objected to that and said that the process by which we rejected their application was unfair and took that to this independent panel that we have for reviewing uh, the decisions of the board. They went through that process, the panelists were appointed, parties called their evidence, had a hearing, and now a decision has been issued. So at, at a practical level, we're very pleased that the system has been tested and obviously provides a mechanism for members of the community to use when they feel that a decision of the board uh, requires independent review. Uh, where we go, it's, it's probably a bit early to tell, but watch what happens on Friday. send an, uh, uh, so many requests to a corporate server or government server that those servers might go down. Uh, a voluntary movement of major corporations came together called the Configure Working Group to, uh, to spread methods to stop the spread of Configure. IQ 